Hello and welcome back to Suspended Fanimation. I am your host, Dennis Patholkis, and this is The Tick, Season 2, Episode 10, Choose Love. And unfortunately, as of Friday, late Friday evening, uh, Ben Edlin announced that uh, The Tick is done. Uh, basically, that uh, this version of it anyway at Amazon is done officially. Uh, he couldn't find a home before the actor's um, contracts expired. So that's pretty much what happened there. So the actors are under contract for a certain amount of time. Once their contracts expired, they're not renewed. They are basically released from it, and there's no way to get them back for the series. Uh, I mean, you could, but you'd have to really negotiate and all that kind of stuff. So unfortunately, um, I, I hate the fucking timing on this because, I mean, it honestly is uh, uh, one of the best iteration of the tick that we've had. I, I agree with you, Viking bitch. It, it's going to return in some form or another. But uh, this one set up some good things to come and we're not going to get to see any of that, which really sucks. Um, <clears throat> and also, I mean... Uh, it just was really good. It really was. It was really, really damn good. But um, yeah, I guess I should start this off with spoiler alert. I'm going to spoil the shit out of the episode. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it for Christ's sake. It's on still on Amazon. Go and see it. If you have Amazon Prime, it's free with your Prime subscription. So and it's worth the it's worth your time. Quite honestly, it's well written. It's funny. Uh, it's got some good heart to it, um, you know, just just a lot of things to it. And uh, it's it's unlike any of the other stuff out there. So that's the the sad part about this, too, is that, you know, um, we're we're getting something original that's getting canceled. But uh, yeah, exactly. More Danger Boat, Pen Farm Girl, I agree. Um, and you're right. Like every, uh, so far, every inc incarnation has been great. And uh, I'm sure the next one will be too, but I, I really like this incarnation. I liked what Peter Ser uh, Serfinovich uh, had done with this version of the tick. He had blended a bit of Patrick Warburton stuff in there, a bit of the cartoon, a bit of the comic. All of it had kind of kind of blended in together and it was a, actually a really good representation. And I thought this season, the suit finally came together and they finally had the comic accurate or even cartoon accurate suit on for a change. And I was I was actually really pleased with the way the suit came out in the end there. And uh, yeah, yeah. And Danger Boat, exactly. Danger Boat, Jesus. Uh, Danger Boat was awesome. Um, and Tinfoil Kevin. And Arthur. Um, and Miss Lint. <laughs> I mean, uh, and Superion. All this stuff was actually really, really good. And stuff we're going to miss, quite honestly. So, um... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go through this uh, a bit. Uh, let's see how I want to do. I'm, you know, I'm just going to do what I normally do. And I'm going to do a recap of this and then uh, talk about it. And thank you, Vi Viking Bitch, for talking about Great Thumbnail. That's actually from season one, but I kind of figured it it uh, it fit better. I was going to use them uh, running down the hallway at the very end into the light. And uh, I didn't want to do that. It just seemed too deathy for me on that one. I wanted something a little bit better. On that, you know, so uh, I chose that one. I, they, you know, I, I chose love on that one. <laughs> and yes, it is going to be hard to top Pen Farm Girl. Uh, and yeah, I love Miss Lynn's storyline too. It's it's a uh, villain to hero and back to villain. But was she really a villain, or is she, you know, was she going to set up her own thing? And and we'll get to that in just a second. So. Uh, we have everyone in the flag five. Their watches are going off the alert. They're in the ready room. And Miranda comes in and tells everyone that Rathbone has been uh, killed. Uh, and that they have a drone footage of the killer from the roof across the way. And it was uh, Overkill. So Overkill has moved now to the most wanted on Aegis's list. A wanted list. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the meantime, Superion is taking Arthur's suggestion quite literally of taking a walk. But he's doing this up on the moon. So he's on the lunar surface and uh, he's thinking about what he can do in order to, you know, get people, you know, get back into people's good graces. And he goes, well, I could do it, 
uh, he, he goes, well, uh, you know, and maybe, uh, you gotta get a little more self-centered is what he thinks. And he goes, maybe I could do this. And he goes, maybe I could do the thing is what he says. And he's looking at the earth and he says, I, maybe I could do the thing. And we'll find out what the thing is in just a minute here. Uh, agent Hobbs in the meantime, wants to talk to Arthur alone and he brings him inside. There's still the bullet hole in the window that, uh, you know, where Rathbone got killed and he's sitting on Rathbone's desk desk. And uh, he hands over Arthur a little uh, manila envelope that has Dot's picture in it. And he says Dot's been working with Overkill and that she's going down the wrong path. And that uh, luckily she has someone, you know, she's related to someone in the Flag 5 that can help her. So he wants her to, he, um, he wants Arthur to bring Dot in at this point. Hey, Fenobi, how's it going? <clears throat> so... And he's now being called Acting Agent Commander Dr. Agent Hobbs. <laughs> Which I thought was kind of funny, you know, getting this little, uh, there, there was, you know, a good like 20 seconds of them uh, bantering back and forth about how to, what he should be named. Um, and you see the tick, he's just pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, waiting for Arthur to come back. And when Arthur does come back, uh, he asks Sage for a favor. And we see them get teleported out to the docks. And that's when he tells Sage and Tick as well uh, that Hobbs is in control of Overkill. Because he knows where that little chip came from because Rathbone had told them. And, uh, you know, he said also it, it all came together when uh, Hobbs had his back to the bullet hole in the window. And his back to the window without any fear of being killed by Overkill. Because, of course, he's controlling Overkill at this point. And, um... Uh, Hobbs is trying to take over Aegis. So he needs uh, Sage to go back and deliver a me message to Flexon because Flexon, uh, of course, is the lawyer for Lubstercules. And since they filed the motion, Hobbs knows about Lubstercules' children at this point. So, yeah. Um, Hobbs finds out, of course, that Tick and Arthur have left the building uh, undetected and he wants to know how they did that of course but at the same time he wants to have a little meeting with Joan of Arc and also wants a strike force assembled as well and then we see aboard Danger Boat Tick and Arthur tell Dot and Danger Boat about what's going on with Hobbs and uh, Rathbone's death of course and Dot says that she could have stopped it if she was there and she finally comes clean to Arthur about being a category and at first Arthur you know is a little bit in denial, but then he's like, okay, um, I get it, you know. And <laughs> I love Tick says, Destiny is on the phone. It's a party line and we're all invited. <laughs> so, yeah, some really good stuff here. Um, Joan and Walter in the meantime. So they also realize that uh, Joan and Walter are in trouble, of course, or in danger because they have the kids and that uh, Hobbs knows about the kids, of course, and he's going to go after Joan and Walter at this point. Um, so, sorry, I got little children screaming out in the back now. Jesus. Okay. Um, so Joan and Walter end up having a uh, heart-to-heart, -heart, of course, about uh, who he is and, you know, if everything's still the same between them. And, of course, Walter's like, yes, it's still the same. He goes, nothing has changed between you and I. And that's when he starts hearing, they both start hearing uh, something overhead, like something with engines. And he says, that's a troop transport. He goes, that means a strike team's coming in. Go and get the kids and get the hell out of here. And uh, we see some agents come in and Walter beats the shit out of them. And Kevin's in the bathroom, of course, uh, minding the kids. And he tells Joan, he goes, uh, he goes, Joan, and he takes off his tinfoil hat. I have to touch you. And when he touches her, they both disappear. And she goes, where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> so we see they're invisible at this point. Um, and yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we see Walter outside kicking the shit out of some more agents. When we hear Kevin's voice, disembodied voice says, Walter, I have to touch you. And he touches him and Walter disappears. <laughs> and we see the door go down the front door of the, uh, <laughs> the apartment. And he says, oh, excuse me. We can hear them walking around the guys. They walk over the door and they walk out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Tinfoil Kevin did have a really bitch in power. He actually had a, a pretty, a pretty good, uh, pretty good power on that one. 
So Flex on in the meantime is watching the new he's back in the uh you know the lounge watching the news report about Superion walking on the moon on the lunar surface there. And uh Sage comes in, he goes, I, I've got a message for you from Arthur. When all of a sudden the lights kind of dim and flicker, and he goes, What the hell was that? And he's looking around, and it's the same look he had on his face when Rathbone was feeding, when he opened up his little chest cavity thing and was feeding it a mouse. It was the same thing. So he knows something weird is going on. At that point, we see uh, we go down the morgue. We see Rathbone's body laying on the morgue slab there, and the, all the lights are flickering around his body. So obviously, something's going on. Hobbs, in the meantime, meets with Joan of Arc, and um, uh, he uh, she knows that he wants something from her, of course. And he says, "Yeah, I need an off the books project done for me." And she says, well, what would I get in return? And he says, well, how about you be the leader of the Flag Five and you get the keys to the kingdom, is what he says. And, and he basically shows her this pad, this electronic pad that has the keys to the kingdom of all of Aegis. And she's like, all right, I'm in. Sure, why not? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Overkill is able to call Dot, uh, Tick, and Arthur, and Danger Boat, of course, and tell them that Hobbes is the duke. And he doesn't know why he's being released from control, but, uh, you know, he just wanted to tell them goodbye and that, you know, they were his family and all this kind of stuff. And he crushes up his phone, but just before he can take out his gun and shoot himself in the head, Hobbs assumes control of him again. And Arthur, in the meantime, knows it's a trap. So uh, Overkill has traced, uh, over, you know, uh, Overkill, excuse me, Danger Boat has traced Overkill's phone. And Arthur, of course, knows it's a trap that uh, Hobbes, uh, you know, allowed him to call them so that he can trap them. And I love the tick he, in this one. He goes, the truth about the truth is that it's a choice. You choose love or you choose fear. Everything after that is up to destiny. So everybody chooses love and they decide to go after Overkill, knowing that it's a trap at that point. Um Superior on the moon, by the way, is thinking about getting up enough speed to get the Earth to spin backwards so maybe he can turn back time to when everyone loved him before. Now, for those of you who think that might be a little familiar, it's from the 1978 Superman movie by Donner. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I thought it was actually pretty funny. And he says, well, he goes, the earth, the way it spins forward, it goes forward in time. But if I can spin it backwards, maybe I can get time to spin backwards. Or 7,000 people could just go hurtling into space. <laughs> you know, that's what he's thinking at that point. Yeah. Joan, Kevin, and Walter enter Walter's shed, and Kevin makes them reappear again. And uh, that takes a lot out of him, actually. He has a low blood sugar is what he's saying. He needs something to eat, like a little candy bar or something. And Walter opens up the shed and all the, you know, electronics that he's got in there. And Joan's like, what the hell, Walter? Are there any more secrets? And this is where I thought was kind of weird, is you get a little chorus of secrets. When he kind of looks for a second, like he's got something else. And then he goes, no, no, that's it. That's the last thing. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I just thought it was kind of funny that they did that. And we're not going to get any resolution on that shit either. So, um, yeah. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Yeah, movie for no I love the Superman references in this. The the This season where they directly uh, just bit stuff from Super, you know, from Donner's Superman was brilliant. I mean, just absolutely brilliant. The re Can I read your mind? Still makes me fucking laugh every time I think about it. <laughs> Because, I mean, it's the exact same dialogue, but done in a completely different context. And it's really damn funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, it was a lot of fun, I should say. So, in the meantime, uh, Flexon is trying to visit Lobsterculis. And nobody's there. Everyone's gone uh, because of the shooting that, of course, happened with Rathbone. And uh, he runs into Edgelord, who ends up. Joan of Arc has given him the, the keys to the kingdom, the, the pad, and he's roaming around down below in the basement. And he goes, hey, you, hey, kid, uh, you got one of those Flag 5 uh, all-access pads, right? And he's like, yeah. He goes, you think you can open up the cell for me? I've got a client in there I need to, uh, to meet with. So Edgelord opens up the cell, and uh, Flexon goes in to find an empty cell. No Lobstercules. What the hell? Yeah. Um, 
in the meantime, Tick, Dot, and Arthur show up on the water at the water treatment plant and find Overkill walking like a robot kind of thing. And Tick goes after him. And Arthur warns him. He goes, he's being controlled by Hobbs. Don't go after him. And what happens? But Tick gets launched back. I mean, just flies through the air and hits a cargo container. And we see that Lobstercules comes out. And Lobstercules is being controlled by Hobbs as well because he comes out with his little key fob that has a microphone in it and says that uh, the only way to stop Lump Circules is you're going to have to kill her. Unfortunately, she has no choice in the matter is what he says. And uh, that's when Dot's like, you know, I'm going to kick your ass and I'm going to take the fob back from you. And that's when we find uh, Overkill is up on top of the roof and starts shooting at them. And so Dot and Arthur have to take a cover at that point. And uh, we get a little bit of, uh, well, actually, I take that back. Before that happens, when Dot says she's going to kick his ass, uh, Joan of Arc shows up, does a little arc thing on there, and uh, tells Dot, nope, she's not going to do it. And, you know, uh, they're like, well, what is, you know, what does Joan of Arc get out of this kind of thing? And she's like, well, you know, that's my own thing. Uh, and I love how Dot actually calls her Paloma, because uh, that's a callback to the first season when, she uh the only time she met her was when she was posing as arthur's work friend when she showed up at the house and she was being a uh, paloma is what she was calling herself and she says it sarcastically hi paloma which i thought was pretty funny um hobbs basically says he wants the human race to survive that's the that's his whole rationale for doing all of this and uh he wants answers he's going to leave one of them alive so they can get answers for of where uh you know the rest of their family is at and also the kids as well because he needs them because they're the only ones that know that he's actually the bad guy they're, those are the only people that are left and that's what this whole thing is all about too uh and he hands over i thought it was kind of weird he hands over to joan the uh the gun that he has the little uh, uh capsule gun if you will and she's holding it and like it's no big deal while he's monologuing and all this stuff and yeah and and joan basically joan of arc tells him she goes yeah you know what I, i'm really not listening to anything he says because i'm basically distracting him and they're like what and he goes, yeah um my guys right now are robbing aegis of everything so we see frank and uh edgelord uh you know just robbing the crap out of the place and they've cleaned out all of aegis and Hobbs says, oh, congratulations. You're the woman has, who's robbed, you know, all of Aegis on this stuff. And uh, now you've got everything, but now we have a deal. So, you know, you want to keep your end up? And she's like, no, I don't think so. I think I'm done here. And she flies off. And that's when Dot's like, okay, now I'm going to kick your ass. And that's when Overkill shows up. And we see Overkill start shooting at them. So Dot decides that she is going to... Um, distract overkill because she can dodge the bullets while arthur takes on hobbs which he does he ends up taking uh the fob out of hobbs's hands in the meantime the tick is getting the shit kicked out of him by lobstercules lobstercules is just pounding him back and forth all over the place and he is not fighting back because he doesn't want to fight back against her and uh arthur ends up grabbing the fob and crushing it and destroying it and lobstercules gets out of her you know out of control uh out of Hobbs's control. There we go. And also overkill as well. And Lobstercules grabs Hobbs and says that she can kill him and end him right now, but she's not going to do it. And uh, the tick says that's because she chose love. <laughs> In the meantime, Dot is up on the roof and uh, overkills, you know, chiding her for coming after him and all that stuff. He goes, I warned you about that. And she goes, oh, you're you. And she runs up and hugs him and he hugs her back, you know, and everything's good. So we see, uh, you know, at the end there, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Rathbone, his chest piece opens up. He's laying there on the slab on, on the morgue, and all of a sudden his chest piece opens up, and these tentacles come out, and we see light, you know, lightning and all this stuff kind of flashing around the room, and uh, the tentacles come out and they draw this mystic symbol in the air. And uh, a deep voice says, Thrakazog. Now, for those of you who aren't uh, huge Tick fans, Thrakazog is the name of the alien 
the mucus alien uh, tick that was in the cartoon. Uh, the tick, I believe it was in season two, if I'm not mistaken. And it was also an angel when Ben Edlin was the uh, executive producer or the showrunner for Angel. I believe it was in the final season in uh, the Halloween episode right before it was uh, in the episode of Smile Time. At the very beginning, when uh, Angel comes back, he had been finding the Thrakazog and his uh, sword is covered in mucus. Exactly. It's a snot tick. Which I, I love that he keeps bringing back Thrakazog now. It's been in three different incarnations and it's just the name. That's it. But still, that's all you need. And it, it's, it's awesome that he actually put that in there. And we see Rathbone come back to life. Uh, so Rathbone is addressing the troops saying, you know, uh, it was a dark day for us, but we got through it. He goes, no more secrets. Um, you know, we, we got taken advantage of. He goes, the Flag 5 protocol is suspended right now because of what Joan of Arc did. And he goes, no more secrets. That's what got us in this mess in the first place. And uh, as he says that, we see Sage kind of reach out his hand. And he, he's, you know, doing his thing. And he's looking at Rathbone. And he tells Bronze Star, he goes, nope, he's got one more secret. And it's going to be, uh, and as he says, it's going to be a whole damn thing. You'll see. Which I'm pretty sure that's where they would have been, where they would have led with on season three. We would have found out a little bit about more about, uh, you know, all of that stuff that was going on with Rathbone, which I would have loved to have seen. Uh, moving on with Dennis, I specifically watched the animated episode with that character in it. Fun stuff. Yeah, that's uh, it's, it's one of my favorite episodes. Actually, the Proto Clown is my favorite episode of the tick uh the animated series yeah uh yeah and uh we see kevin it becomes lobstercules nanny <laughs> and lobstercules is living aboard uh flexon's houseboat while she gets her legal affairs all in order at this point and uh walter decides you know they ask him what who what he wants to be called is it john or walter and he goes i like walter so they tell him come in here and everyone gets in a big hug, group hug. And in the meantime, Danger Boat is uh, talking to Overkill over the intercoms and says, so you're an Aegis, right? He's like, yeah. Says, How does it feel? It feels good. It's a win, isn't it? <laughs> and, of course, he starts playing music. And uh, Overkill's pissed. He goes, get that crap out of my head. And uh, so he starts, nope, it's a dance party. So you see Overkill start dancing a little bit by himself there. And there's no music, of course, playing. So everyone's kind of looking at it weird. And, you know, uh, Joan asked Dot, she goes, well, what's going on there? He, he's a little bit weird, isn't he? She goes, no, he's, he's okay. I like weird. And so she comes over and asks him if he's having a dance party by himself. And he says, yeah. And uh, she's, she says, well, mind if I join you? And they start dancing together, you know, just a little bit there, you know, in place. Uh and uh, we end up uh, at the very end there. Uh, Tick and Arthur are taking off, and she, you know, overkill. Well, not overkill. Uh, Joan asks him, "Where are they, where are they going?" And uh, she says, "Dot says afternoon patrol, I think." And that's when they're running out the door, and Tick asks, "You ready for our adventure, chum?" And <laughs> Arthur says, "Ready, Tick." And we finally get spoon out of Tick's mouth which is awesome. But we're not done yet. We have Superion, uh, in the meantime, still on the moon, and he's decided that, yes, he is going to go through with his plan. He is going to go through his plan of spinning the Earth backwards. He just needs to get up enough speed, and as he's reaching down, he's trying to get enough spoon, you know, uh, enough spoon, there we go, enough velocity going, this gigantic ship hovers over the top of him, and asks and says, Fugitive 11X, assume the position. And uh, he falls backwards on the moon and goes, Oh shit. And we fade to black. And that's how we fucking leave an entire series. So, uh, not happy that they did that, that they, uh, Amazon did not choose love. They chose fear. That's all I can say. But yeah, it was a really damn good ending. And, uh, <sighs> it's just, it's, it's sad that it ended this way, but we did get two seasons out of it, which was good. And we got two good seasons. I could say that. 
And I agree with you, Viking bitch, what you were saying earlier here. Uh, ben Edlin is a god among men. I can't wait to see how the tick returns. I just wish they would give him more time to tell these stories. Exactly. I wish they just give him money, quite honestly, so he could do the story that he needs to do. You know, let him do a big story for God's sakes. Uh, that that would be awesome to do. Even a movie, you know, do a fucking movie. That would be really awesome if he could do that. <clears throat> Uh, moving away, I just didn't care for the Puck version of the series as much. Uh, oh, you mean uh, Patrick Warburton's series? Uh, I liked Patrick Warburton's series. I thought it was good. And they had uh, Quark, the guy who played Quark as the Terror. Not as good as Jackie Earl Haley. Jackie Earl Haley as the Terror was just fucking awesome. Uh, yes, I am a little sunburned. Thank you for noticing, Mr. Roboto. That's what happens when you work outside for a little bit on some stuff. Try it sometime. <laughs> yeah. And, but yeah, that's why I didn't want to use that, uh, them running out the door into the light. It just seemed a little too morbid for me. I liked the hug a lot better, even though it was from season one. Ah, uh, Viking bitches. I remember when they put up the vote for the pilot, I wrote a big paragraph about what a big fan I am. Uh, then they gave me two great seasons and stabbed me in the heart. Exactly. I did the same thing. Viking bitch. Uh, I voted for it. I, uh, I went to all the stuff they did at Comic-Con here. I actually waited. Uh, they had the escape room that they did the tick escape room. Uh, I waited, almost two hours in line for that. And I would, I went early. I went like 8 a.m. And uh, that's where I got a shirt. I got a uh, phone cover and all kinds of different stuff. And uh, I, I gave some of that stuff away in a bag and all that. Yeah. Uh, Pen Farm Girl says, I still like Batman well too, but uh, all in all, this version was better across the board. Yeah, I have to admit the the characters in this uh, so it was, it played out a little bit darker in the beginning, but then it became lighter as I went through and it, it kind of, it, it kind of worked out somehow. I don't know exactly what it was. So, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. And, and I have to admit like, uh, Sarah Venovich's version is a blend of Warburton, the cartoon and the comic. He did it somehow. I don't know how he did it. Um, I'm, I have to ask Ben a couple of questions if I can find him at Comic-Con this year. And, uh, I know he's going to be asked a shitload of questions about it and he's probably gonna be tired of it, but I like to see what he's got going on. Uh, Peter really got the boy scout quality without being annoyed. He just, yeah, he did. It's that weird. It's that fine line of being, uh, boisterous clueless and um charming all at the same time it's really it's a hard thing to get right and he got that trifecta right there yeah sewer urchin would have been awesome although i don't know if kids today would get sewer urchin because it was based off a of rain man a bit a little bit so yeah Yes, uh, I agree with you, Viking bitch. I was kind of hoping that at some point in time we would see Oedipus show up and get the Knight of a Million Billion, a Million Zillion Ninjas. Is that what it, how the title is? I can't remember offhand. It's been a while. Uh, I need some sewer urchin rain man. Yeah, exactly. Batman well always, uh, you know, deflator mouse always, you know, made me laugh. And uh, one of my favorite character names that they had in the tick in the cartoon was Bipolar Bear. It's time to fight crime. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> it's it's wrong, but at the same time, it was really fucking funny at the same time. So it was just it's just a little one shot. He's in there when you see all the the heroes being called to action, and uh, I believe it was in the first season. And uh, they were they were kind of going across the city, little vignettes, and you see bipolar bear, and I was just laughing my ass off because it just a lot of the stuff was not made for kids on a Saturday morning cartoon. It was not. 
it was geared directly towards adults, but they left it for kids as well. Uh, and what is it? The evil uh, bomber with bombs at midnight? The evil midnight bomber that bombs at midnight. There we go. That uh, that guy should have been in something as well. We should have seen a, a, a live action version of him as well. I would have liked to have seen Dinosaur Neil at some point. Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. The, you know, the proto clown even Barry. Uh, Barry, the other tick that was in the comics, you know. Yeah, the tick is a huge universe. It really is. Yeah. And I agree with you, Move. You know, playing the comedy straight and still being quirky and heartwarming, but not flat. Yeah, it does take a lot of talent. <clears throat> Pen Farm Girls, I, I just felt a little blindsided. Amazon isn't like sci fi, they don't usually kill good shows other than JCVJ. Yeah. Um, John Claude Van Johnson. I mean, six episodes. They should have just played out the other six episodes. I know they have them in the can someplace because they did all 12 episodes. That was one of the things that got voted on. That was one of the things that they had. This is back when Amazon was releasing a half season and then they released the other half of the season a couple of months later. They did it with a tick the first season, which is kind of stupid. This one they just released all at once. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I thought Amazon was more open to listening to the audience. Well, they're, they're listening to their shareholders right now is what they're doing. And I think they had, yeah, I know they did. They had a change in programming, uh, director of programming as well. And I'm pretty sure she was the one that ended up killing the tick on that one. If you take a look at the panel, um, there was a panel that I went and asked Ben a question. It was the Amazon panel. Uh, he was out of place there for some reason because it was uh, The Expanse, um, Homecoming, uh, which Homecoming was okay, but I don't think that that should have been canceled, quite honestly. Uh, but it won't because Julia Roberts was the executive producer on it, and Sam Eshmael is the... And I'm a big Sam Eshmael fan, and I loved Homecoming, but at the same time, I didn't think it was worthy of a second season. And then, uh, so they had, yeah, the expanse homecoming, the tick, and then the fourth, the third one or the fourth one was, uh, God, what was it? It wasn't Jack Ryan. It might've been Jack Ryan. Yeah. I think it might've been Jack Ryan. It was just all kinds of weird shit altogether. And the, the tick did not fit within that group of things. And Ben just looked kind of bored up there. And I wanted to ask him a question because no one was actually asking him any questions at that panel. It was kind of sad, quite honestly. And that's, you know, something you just need to give him his own his own stage, if you will. And let him talk. I mean, the guy has stories. He is entertaining. He knows how to talk. He knows how to engage people. He knows how to engage the audience. If they just gave him his own panel, he would have sold that thing easily. They would have easily gotten a lot more views. But hey, what do I know? Bipolar versus bipolar man. I don't know. Uh, doorman. Yeah. It's all about the cape. Mouse and posing. Yes. Yes, that's right. Uh, Venture Brothers and the Tick tag team. That would be awesome. But the Venture Brothers uh, gets lumped into the whole adult swim thing. And people are fucking high as a kite at the adult swim panels i'm talking both the audience and the people on the panels so yeah i mean completely and totally high as a kite <clears throat> uh, ben edlin needs a whole platform to himself yeah he does he really does quite honestly and answer your question joe yes a little dog can kick you in the nuts too if you were in her presence. She is very adept at it. Adept, I should say. Adapt. It's been a long day. And I'm sunburned. <clears throat> That's what happens when you're outside for a couple hours trying to find out what the fuck people are doing with things they're not supposed to be doing. So that's all I'm going to say. Hong Kong Foo? Maybe. 
Hong Kong Fui. I saw your jab move for nobody. I chose to ignore it. <laughs> I reject your reality and supplant my own. <laughs> ninja stealth kicking skills. She's not ninja about it at all, Pen Farm Girl. She's actually very direct. Yeah. That's right, Mui Fenobi. I know I know how to work my audience. <laughs> Uh, Slurmy Scott says, I'm still missing Briscoe County Jr. from the 80s. Uh, these things just never make sense. I know. I know. Hey, man, I still space above and beyond. I'm still waiting to get that fucking shit resolved. That that one actually. And, and Manimal. What the fuck, man? Manimal. One season, Manimal. Come on. And all he changed into was a panther, a, uh, a falcon, and a tiger. I think those are the only three things he ever turned into. Yeah, and Sarah Connor Chronicles. Where the hell was that? Man, there's all these things that uh, need to be resolved at this point. Uh, how would Teen Titans work in the Tick universe? They wouldn't. Yeah. You never saw a manimal like him, but you can count yourself lucky on that one. Uh, quite honestly, I've never gone back and looked at it again because I, I know it's horrible. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. I can almost guarantee you. All you need is three transformations. That, no, man. I mean, it's kind of like a beast boy in Titans. He can only transform into a fucking tiger. I mean, that's it. A tiger. That's it. He turns into a green tiger. And uh, that kind of pissed me off as well. That's actually kind of what reminded me of that too, was when he was only turning into a tiger in Titans. I'm like, what is this manimal? They work with Manimal's budget. I'm pretty sure they are at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I know I'm sunburned. I had sunscreen on too. So, yeah. Otherwise, it would have been a lot worse. Okay. And it was indirect lighting. It was all overcast and shit like that. If you want the weather out here, that's... Uh, and that that's just indirect lighting is what and sunscreen SPF 50. Yes, by the way, for those of you playing at home. We all want the manimal budget right now. To, yeah, of course, I'd work with the manimal budget and be able to do it. I can give you something of quality on a manimal budget. <laughs> Will that be my tagline? That 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 might be that might be my pitch line at uh, Comic-Con. Suspended Fanimation, I can make things work on a minimal budget. <laughs> Give me a minimal budget and I will do it for you. That sounded wrong, but hey, what the hell? Sorry, that little gnat right there. Slurm the worm. Yeah. So for those of you who uh, have just joined... <laughs> if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. Also hit the like button as well. If you don't like what you see, you can hit the dislike button. I just asked you to get out in the comment section below and tell me what it is you don't like. Give me some constructive criticism. Maybe I'm too sunburned. Maybe I slurred a couple of words. Maybe I said something out of line. It happens at times because I don't edit this shit. I just go stream of consciousness and give you what it is. The most prep I do is what kind of picture I'm putting up and what I've written down in my notes. That's my prep. Uh, if you like what you see you can, uh, and you want to know what I'm going to be on next, you can hit the button, the bell down below here too. And uh, don't hit it if you already hit it before because it will unclick it. You can go into the bell settings and get as little or as many notifications as you want. You can also go to my website, suspenderfanimation.com, and take a look at the schedule. I have a schedule up every week. I switch that out. Um, tomorrow is going to be Jessica Jones season three, the entire thing, uh, and also series finale, uh, season and series finale. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit. And Wednesday is going to be Krypton season two, episode two. Thursday is going to be I zombie Friday is swamp thing. Yes. Even though it's been canceled, I'm still covering it. Saturday is Saturday morning blast off. That's where I take the genre news of the week and talk about all of that and anything else genre you guys want to talk about. Sunday I'm off and Monday I'm going to return with Legion. 
the beginning of Legion season three, the final season. It seems like everything I'm covering now is the final season of everything. So yeah, yeah. And, uh, there we go. Um, oh, I also have uh, the schedule up on Facebook. I also have a Twitter account. I have a Instagram account. And the Instagram account is going to get more active once Comic-Con rolls around. And I also have a Patreon as well, but I don't have any tiers set up at the moment. So, yeah. Hey, you may laugh about Tiny Lobo there, Movie Finobi, but Tiny Lobo has brought in some viewers, uh, I have to admit. It's up over 200 views right now, like 225 views, somewhere around there. So uh, Krypton is uh, doing, uh, you know, not doing bad. I can just say that much. Uh, what? I can't watch all of Jessica Jones by tomorrow. Oh, well, I don't mind spoilers. Pen Farm Girl says, yes. Um, yeah, I watched that all weekend. If that gives you an indication, I tried watching, what is it, six episodes of Good Omens? Fell asleep during episode four and uh stopped started watching jessica jones and made it all the way through jessica jones 13 episodes each of them being one hour episodes in the weekend and still haven't gone back to good omens as of yet so uh, I, I don't know what to tell you guys i'm sorry uh yeah i i guess my nerd card is revoked at that point I, I understand that people like good omens. I'm just, it's not floating my boat. Danger boat does. Danger boat floats my boat. But yeah, this one isn't. Yeah. Uh, I still haven't, I haven't watched uh, Jessica Jones yet. Weekend is what Movie uh, Fenobi says. Yes, uh, Movie Fenobi. I did it over the weekend. I did. So. Uh, I will have to watch later, Dennis. I am only up to episode six. Um, I believe it's episode seven of uh, Viking Bitch that had one of my favorite lines in it. There's a couple times in Jessica Jones where I actually laughed out loud. And uh, all I'm going to say is Patsy needs a meltdown. That's all I'm going to say. And that one made me laugh. Patsy needs a meltdown. It just it, it really did. It made me it made me laugh. So, uh, Pen Farm Girl says, I just rewatched Constantine instead of Jessica Jones. I couldn't help myself once I started. Uh, hey, Morks, how's it going? Uh, yeah, this season of Jessica Jones, I'm surprised. I, I really was, I have to admit. Uh, after season two, I was ready to just dump that entire thing. And um, nah, all I can say is watch it. It's It's good. It's some good stuff. So uh slurmy scott says instead of angels and demons think of them as aliens making war for the control of earth huh. yeah hallway and feelings hallways and feelings who would want purple man as a life coach yeah i mean uh purple man really doesn't care about other people's lives he doesn't care about other people because he can get anything he wants just by asking not even by asking just by telling yeah. So if you're still on the fence about subscribing, you're going to see a video pop up in this area. It's going to pick the best video for you out of my video, my vast video library. Out of all the stuff that you've been watching on YouTube, it's going to take that algorithm, pick one of the videos that I have and pop it up there. You're also going to see a video up here. It's going to be from my last video. I believe that is uh, Saturday morning blast off. Yes. The latest Saturday morning blast off is going to be up in here as well. So there we go. And then you can decide from there and you can hit the subscribe button and the like button as well. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't not like you. He prefers everybody else. Uh huh. I see how it is. Um, if you know, he says it's okay for Dennis to not like something. He doesn't like me, but I'm still here. It's not that I don't like you. Mufinobi. I don't like your jokes. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I like you just fine, man. That's all. Wow. Yes, it was a jab. It was a jab, 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 jab. 
I think it's jokes, right? He is that what he does, Viking bitch? Is that what it's supposed to be? They're supposed to be jokes that he's. I, I can't tell because they're not that funny. Oh, there's another jab right there. Um, <laughs> uh, TMI. Yes, yes, TMI. Well, <laughs> she's not going to answer. Oh, wow. Well, you do like, far no, I'm kidding. I'm not going to say it. I was going to say it. No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it at that. So uh, with that said, if you're still on the fence, take a look at the videos, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, I'm going to let you guys all go for the night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know if I could bitch, I was bad. Uh, you know, I, was, I, I chose fear on that one. I didn't choose, choose love. Is that what it was? Bringing that all back to the tick. So yes, hopefully we see the tick again in some form or other because uh, yeah, we really do need to. Yes, people do get cranky when you cancel their favorite shows. So I'm not going to lie. I, I, I got a little dust in my eye when I was watching this last episode again. So yeah, now knowing what, what's happened. And I'm fairly sure that that last spoon that we got, I think Ben knew that they were canceling it a lot sooner than what he uh, what he let on, quite honestly. He might have even known back in Comic-Con, to tell you the truth, because the way he was looking up on stage, he might have. I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Because that spoon, uh, we don't see it come out of you know, Peter's mouth, uh, he's running down the hallway when it happens and it's kind of a voiceover thing, uh, more than anything else. It was some ADR that was, that was put into place, but yeah, thank you everybody. Uh, have a good night. I will see you tomorrow for Jessica Jones season three, at least some of you, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I might not have that many people who knows, but, uh, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Otherwise your show may get canceled by Amazon in favor of keeping, you know, something like homecoming on the air or what else do they have? Oh, that's right. Hannah season two of Hannah for some God unknown reason. Anyway, not that I'm bitter or anything. Good night, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow. Thanks everyone. Good night.